really sorry you deserve the most valuable player for the 79 series. Are you kidding? Yeah, but he only got... Well, Morris, excuse me. Have you seen your brother? Which one? The brain. Gregory? Nah, not since this morning. Oh. Hey, what's that? Oh, a tuning fork. You can hardly hear anything. I know, but watch what happens when you put it against something hollow. This is a tuning fork. With it, you can eat tuning spaghetti. Now, you can hear it vibrate better if you put it on something hollow, like this 56 Chevy hubcap. What is all this stuff? I don't have any idea. Well, how'd you get it here? Well, Armando was driving by anyway, so I had Armando. a... Armando? Uh uh-huh. All I know is I've got to turn in a paper describing it on Monday morning. I wish Gregory were here. He knows everything. You're doing homework on a Friday? What happened to the usual Sunday night rush? Can't. My cousin's having a birthday party Sunday. Mm. <sighs> what a pain. Looks like a doorbell in there. If you say so. All I know is the contraption has something to do with sound. Well, we know a lot about sound. We ought to be able to figure out what's going we on. We do? In... Sure. We know all sound is made by vibrating sound. see how the drum vibrates, but where does the sound come from in the cello? The bow makes the string vibrate, and this generates the sound. The vibrations in the gong, even though they're invisible, have enough energy to keep this ping-pong ball bouncing. What you got there? Oh, this is my cheapo telephone. You want to try it? My father would love it. Yeah, right. No phone bill. Yeah. Look, now just keep the fishing line tight so the vibrations can travel along it. Lisa, you were in the middle of a story. So then what happened? I'm sorry. Your party has gone off the fishing line. <laughs> I think the needle's shot. Well, we probably broke it with our little joke. Ouch! I have a needle here if you want one. A cactus needle? That's not going to work. Yeah, sure, we'll watch. See, you have to put it through a cup like this. And then you just put it on the record and it works. Take the other one off. Now watch. Hear it? It works. It's uh -huh. incredible. It's just like the Flintstone photograph. <laughs> yeah, right. Very low fi Yeah, well, I think you better take it off. I don't think you should play Beethoven with a cactus needle. It just doesn't seem right. Yeah, right. I know that one. Play it again. If I could talk to the animals. Right? <laughs> you can see vibrations and feel vibrations. But how do they get to our ears as sound?
one small drop of water, but it makes waves which disturb the whole surface as they move out. Energy from a vibrating object moves through the air in waves. When these waves reach our ears, we interpret them as sound. Okay, so we know sound is vibration, and it gets to our ears by waves. Now that ought to help us figure this thing out. Only Gregory can help us. Hey, what's it like living with a genius? Tricky. All right, let's hook up the battery and see what happens. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. the doorbell rings in there. Write that down. Well, so what? I mean, it still doesn't tell us what this is. Hmm, yeah. I see your point. Well, what else do we know about sound? Animals use sound. I mean, you think this is a cage for a little teeny animal? Right. An animal that gets a lot of company and needs a doorbell. <laughs> Look, this isn't funny, you guys. Okay, okay. Lisa, you're right. Animals do use sound. As a matter of fact, bats use sound to see their way in the dark, except with their ears. Right, sonar. Dolphins use it, too. See him out there? On the island of Hawaii, well, Dr. Bernd Wertzik and his associates are on 24-hour call in order to study the incredible dolphin in the wild. Come on. Dolphins are out there. Come on, we'll load the box. A school has been spotted from shore, and we're off. We're taking special microphones which record underwater so we can listen to the mysterious sounds they make. Let's get going now, and we'll head out and see what we can find, okay? Okay, let's go. Okay. For years, people have believed dolphins talk to each other in clicks, whistles, and squeaks. Now they're trying to find out for sure. Hi, Shore. You spotted any dolphins? Oh, not you. No, we haven't seen any. People have always loved dolphins because they're so friendly and seem so smart. Their brain, in fact, is as big as a person's. For over 10 years, researchers have been studying dolphins in captivity. They learn that even blindfolded, a dolphin can find its way around by making clicking sounds and listening for the echo as it bounces off objects. This is called sonar. In the dolphin's brain, the echoes become pictures. In a way, the dolphin sees with its ears. And they do this so well that still blindfolded, they can find a tiny pellet on the bottom of the tank. Their sonar is so sharp that dolphins can tell the difference between a copper plate and an aluminum one. The plates sound different to the dolphins when the clicks bounce off them. This dolphin was trained to touch the copper one on our left. Will his sonar work if we switch the plates? Got it. At the University of Hawaii, dolphin research is being taken a step further. They're trying to communicate with the dolphins using a whole new language. Ready. It's a language of electronic sounds played through underwater speakers. For example, the dolphins learn this sound. It means ball. And they learn to recognize it. When the dolphin gets it right, he hears a special sound which means yes. Yes. And gets a fish. Fish. When he's wrong, a buzzer means no. And there's no reward. Fish diving head ball ever. Mouth. It's really the same way you teach your dog. But if dolphins are so much smarter than dogs, maybe someday they'll use this language to talk back to us. If that ever happens, it could open up the secret world of these fascinating creatures. Up to now, we've only studied dolphins in captivity. But what if we could listen to what they have to say while they're swimming in the open sea? And that's just what we're doing here in Hawaii, watching and waiting for the wild dolphin. Oh, hey, they see dolphins right off the port bow. Like about 10 to 15. We're going to go over there and record right now. So this is WXP 5.
would they have to tell us? That's the mystery we're trying to solve here in Hawaii. Hey, Lisa, could you pick up the hydrophone and string it out into the water? Okay. Now, what's this going to do? Well, we're going to be recording the sounds. Of the dolphins? Yeah. We're going to find out when, when you hear what they're doing or what they're saying. Well, do we know what it means? Well, we want to watch what they do. If they're quiet and resting and they make one sound, we'd like to be able to to know what kind of sound they make when they're quiet, make another sound when they're out eating, maybe they make another sound when they're playing, so we want to watch what they do. Uh -huh. What does that mean? Sounds they're making sounds, we don't know. We really don't know. A lot of the sounds they make, we can't hear. Why not? They have better hearing than we do, and they can hear sounds that are much higher than the sounds we can hear. That's like dogs, isn't it? Right, right. So the tape recorder is maybe recording sounds that we can't hear right now. Now let's take a look. You can hear them. For the moment, wild dolphins are keeping most of their secrets to themselves. But we're also here, waiting to understand and listening to the sounds of freedom. If you were blind as a bat, you wouldn't be blind at all. In fact, you could even see at night. Today, I'm going to be here at Washington University in St. Louis to find out how bats see with their ears. This is a big brown bat, common all over the United States. This one comes from here in Missouri. This bat finds its way around in the dark using sounds rather than using its eyes. The bat can fly 20 or 30 miles an hour through a forest chasing insects to feed on. The bat makes sounds that travel out from the mouth, bounce off objects, trees or insects, mm -hmm. and come back to the bat's ears. And the bat hears the echo, the echo of the sound, right. and can tell all it needs to know about the object. Yeah. It can easily tell a tree branch from a moth, probably one kind of moth from another. It can tell which way the moth is going so that it knows which way to go to catch the moth, all these things. All this happens very quickly. Uh -huh. When a bat is chasing an insect, from the time it detects the insect in front of it to the time it closes in and catches the insect is less than a second. When you see a bat flittering around in the sky, changing direction and jerking around, each time they turn sharply, they've caught an insect and they're moving on to chase another. <laughs> really? <laughs> All night long. It's amazing. If I were out in the woods and there was a bat around, what would the sound sound like uh -huh. that they make? The sounds that the bat makes, you can't hear. They're inaudible to us. The sounds are too high in pitch, but the bat can hear these pitched, high-pitched ultrasonic sounds very easily. This bat has been trained to sit on the platform and make sonar sounds at the objects in front of it to right. get echoes back. The I bat see. will tell the difference between the larger object and the smaller one from the sounds. So it sits up there, sends out the ultrasonic sounds, which will bounce off of these objects, They'll go back to the bat, and he'll be able to tell which one is the large one. That's right. The sounds bounce off the object, and the larger object produces a louder echo. Then what will it do? Then it will move forward in the direction of the object that's larger, in this case, from here to here. Oh, I get it. I think this bat is about ready for the experiment now. Mark, why don't you come around here and get a bat's eye view? Okay. I'll switch out the light. Jim, I can't see a thing. Well, that would be no problem for the bat. I'll put on a little light so that you can see. Why is he moving his head back and forth like that? Well, the bat is looking around with its sound. It's scanning the objects on the left and on the right. He's kind of checking things out with sound. That's right. I guess this bat is ready to do the experiment. He did it. Yes, he did. But how do you know he just doesn't go over to that side? Well, let's reverse the balls and see what happens.
You still got it. I'm convinced. <laughs> That's great. Well, I'll tell you, I wish I had uh, some sort of radar so I could walk around at night like that. That's really excellent. Right. So animals use sound, and people also... Hey, what's this? I don't know. It's some kind of motor. Anyway, people can also use sonar with the help of machines. Hey, remember those sonic guide glasses? <laughs> oh, are you sure you've got your eyes closed? Have I lied to you yet? I don't know. You might just be a great liar. <laughs> <laughs> be quiet. I don't want to hear your voice. That's either you or... <laughs> gotcha! Oh, that's fantastic! <laughs> How does it work? Well, the sound comes out here, bounces off of things, and comes back in here. And it plays into my ears so I can hear where things are, even if I can't see at all. Even if you're blind? That's right. Fantastic! It works with sonar, you know, just like bats or dolphins. Yeah, I remember that. But I don't think this has anything to do with sonar. I don't know what it does. Well, don't give up, Trine. You'll figure it out. Take a guess. Okay. You stand in front of it, and it tells you how many babies you're going to have. What? Well, like the ultrasound machine. You know, the one my friend used when she wanted to see if she was going to have twins? What are you coming to the hospital today? Uh, well, I'm coming actually to find out exactly how old the baby is when I will be delivering. And I guess every mother, it crosses her mind. When you start to stretch and get really big, you wonder if there's maybe more than one in there. So just to make sure that you... If, well, anyway, to know whether or not I'm going to have twins or just one baby. Do you think you're going to have twins? Uh, sometimes when I get kicked out from both sides at once, then I think <laughs> I am. Hi, how are you? My name is Dr. Weissman. Hi, Lynn. I'm Linda. Right. Uh, okay. Machine. How do you do? Okay. Lynn, why don't you come right around here and just step right up on there and sit down on this stretcher. Have you ever had an ultrasound study before? No, I've never had anything like this. Well, it's a very simple test, and I'll explain it to you as we go along. Okay. Okay? Why don't you just lie down for me? Okay. Doctor, before you start, can you explain what ultrasound is? Well... What we're doing is we're applying this special microphone onto the mother's abdomen, her stomach. And this machine will convert the sound waves into an image that we can see on the screen. The sound waves turn into a picture? Right. It's something similar to what dolphins do when they swim or bats do when they fly in the dark. When a bat wants to fly in the dark, he'll send out a sound wave. And the sound wave will bounce back at him as an echo from an object. And by analyzing the echo that comes back at him, he can see where the object is and how far away it is so that he won't bump into it when he gets near it. Can the baby hear the sound when you put it up against the, the, her stomach? Well, you tell me if you, if you can hear it, okay? I've just turned the machine on. And this is a special microphone that we use. You have it on? It's on right now. But I don't hear anything at all. That's right. Remember I said we're using sound waves beyond the range of normal hearing. We don't see very much when we hold it in the air, but let's see what we see when we put a fetus underneath it. No. Ah, what's that? Yeah. Oh, I can no. see that. Oh, yeah, That's... moving around. The head will be here, which we're not seeing, and the feet on this end. Here we have chest. From here to here, these lines are the ribs. And there's the spine. Uh huh. Right here. And is the heart there? There. Oh, I can see it. See? Yeah. There's the baby. The like heart going beating. so fast. Oh, he moves. He's moving. Right. Oh, is that a baby? Oh, I saw it on there. I was kicking. Oh, that was a strong one. It sure <laughs> was. See? His head is. 88 millimeters. Uh -huh. And how do you determine the baby's age by that? And I can look up and see that 88 millimeters is actually 38 weeks. 
So that means I only have two weeks left? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's why your obstetrician sent you in thinking you may have twins, because you're bigger than he expected for your dates. You're actually two weeks before delivery. Oh, oh my goodness. Better go home and pack your bags. I know. I didn't even get it ready yet. <laughs> I don't know. The fact that the bell is under glass, maybe it all has something to do with the way we hear. I mean, the glass does make it harder for us to hear it, right? Well, one of the other things we know about sound is when you can't hear, it makes a lot of things we take for granted very hard, like learning to speak. We have a new girl with us today, and there she is, right? And her name is Lisa. Good morning, Lisa. Can you say that? Let me hear you. Good morning, no. No. Lisa. Okay. Dan, can you say Lisa? I want to hear you. Lisa. 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 I noticed that you use your hands a lot. You took the kids' hands and put them on your neck and on your nose. Why is that? So they can feel the vibrations of the different sounds because the different sounds are, are felt in different parts of the face. Nice. The M and the N can be felt in the nose area. And the silent consonants, you yeah. can feel the air come out. Okay. Mm. Try this sound. Okay? For this five-year-old boy, just making a simple sound correctly is mm. another step forward. <laughs> okay. Can you help your brother? <laughs> Better? You try that. You try that. Could you make that? Oh, you make me very proud of you. What's that motor doing? I don't know. I don't see anything happening. Gregory would know. Maybe this whole contraption is a musical instrument. <laughs> You're kidding. Sure. For playing songs with one note. Oh, great. Now the doorbell's broken. Well, there are machines that can make music. Well, this doesn't look much like a synthesizer to me. Maybe it's a machine to record sounds. I mean, before I broke it. A microphone? Well, there's all different kinds. And what about that parabolic microphone we had? The kind they used at football games to hear the quarterback signals? Now, they aim it at the quarterback, and it zeroes in on it so they can hear a signal all the way from the sidelines. 254, 328, 328. Ready, set, hut, hut. Okay, okay, it's not a microphone. Maybe it's a paperweight, a big broken paperweight. I just don't understand. We heard the bell before, and then we turned on this motor. Well, maybe the motor does something so we can't hear the bell. Yeah, but I can see the little gizmo moving in there. Well, should I write that down? The little gizmo was moving in there? We just can't hear it. Maybe it's making sounds that humans can't hear. Like my dog whistle. Okay, you guys, I bet I can get Pogo to come to me without using English. Or Spanish. Mm -mm. Or hand signals. Mm -mm. What, you got a hamburger in your pocket? <laughs> okay, you guys ready for this? She's got a string around his neck. Oh, Are you great. guys interested in this experiment or not? Okay, hit it. Go ahead. All right. All right. Thank you for coming, Coco. <laughs> I don't Good believe boy. it. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? I mean, I didn't hear anything. It's a special dog whistle. Humans can't hear it. You mean, you think Pogo's hearing a lot of other sounds that we can't hear? Probably. Oh, I hope it's not too noisy in here for you, Pogo. <laughs> I give up. I don't know what this machine is about. I'm just going to turn it off and hope that Gregory shows up. I can't understand why we don't hear it. I mean, I can see the bell vibrating. Hey, what's this? I don't know. 
What's that air sound? Hold it. I think I hear the bell now. Yeah, it got louder. Yeah. Why? What's different now? Well, the only thing in there is air. Maybe air. Wait a minute. Turn the lever back to where it was before. Turn the pump back on. Huh? Okay, now turn the lever back around to where you put it before. Uh-huh. We can't hear it when the motor's been on because the motor must pump the air out of there. Hey, you solved it. Yep. Right. I know. Write it down. <laughs> so then, sound has to travel through air for us to hear it. Right, in order for the vibrations to get to our eardrum. Congrats, Trine. It was nothing. I don't believe it. Hi, Greg. Hi, Greg. This is ridiculous. I'm reading this stupid science fiction story. Supposed to take place in outer space, right? Right. An asteroid is about to destroy their spaceship, right? Right. So they fire a laser beam at it, and the asteroid explodes, right? So? So, look at this. When the asteroid explodes, this dumb book says crash. Now, if they're supposed to be in outer space, there can't be any crash. There's no air out there for the sound to travel through. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Bye, Bye Greg. Greg. It's Gregory. Oh. <laughs> be sure to watch Monday when 3 to 1 Contact brings you the exciting adventures of the Bloodhound Gang. 3 to 1 Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.